and she does. So I encourage you to listen to her album. It's called Waterfall. You can find her on YouTube. To find the real thing, but this is this is the real thing for today. Hope you enjoy. Sometimes it takes a rainy day just to let you know that everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. I've been dreaming in the sun. Won't you wake me up, someone? I need a little peace of mind. Wake me from this dream that I've dreamed so many times. I need a little peace of mind. I need a little peace of mind. When you open up your life to the living, all things come spilling in on you. And you're flowing like a river, the changer and the changed. You got to spill some over, spill some over, spill some over, over all. Filling up and spilling over, it's an endless waterfall. Filling up and spilling over, over all. Filling up and spilling over, it's an endless waterfall. Filling up and spilling over, over all. Let the rain falling all around. Let the rain falling all around. You got to spill some over. Spill some over. Spill some over. Filling up and spilling over. It's an endless waterfall, filling up and spilling over, over all. Filling up and spilling over, it's an endless waterfall, filling up and spilling over, over all. And now we continue what has become our new tradition of lighting candles, peace candles in our homes. So either a real candle or a battery operated candle or just the candle of your heart. But as a symbol that we are entering into sacred space and as a symbol that we are connecting our own homes with the homes in our Zoom community and literally with homes around the world because we as a community of faith desire peace in our own hearts, in our own families and in the world. So let us enter into prayer. Holy God, on this communion Sunday, we pray that you be with us. Help us to open our hearts to the grace that meets us here in our homes as we shelter in place. May we embrace your call to witness to hope and to offer peace to a broken world, even in the midst of the pandemic. And be with us as we work for a world where everyone is safe, no one is targeted, and all of us are included in the circle of community. Help us to open our hearts to your peace so that we may be sources of peace for others. In your holy name, amen. And so good morning. This morning, Jane has set the theme and the tone for us. The theme is abundance and hearts overflowing. We are just a few days past May Day and this, this incredible sense that spring is celebrated and Jesus invites us in, into a life of abundance. In the passage that we'll use today that comes from John, Jesus says that he's come, and he's come that we may have life, and that that life may be abundant. And so even in the midst of the pandemic, when there is huge struggle and stress and strain and grief, we are called to celebrate abundance. 
and to welcome the reality that our hearts can literally, as Jane was speaking, be filled and overflow, like an endless, ever-flowing stream and endless waterfall. So welcome to this service of abundance. We give you a hearty welcome. We have our candles lit. We have our home altars in place. We have all of the prayers that we have brought with us, as well as the prayers of the world joining us. And as we come to this moment, let us recognize God's presence among us. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us to take this time to center on you, for you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment. Hear this assurance from God to the tune of amazing grace. Be still, O heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and come and center ye. Your mind secure and free. Into your care we offer now our worries, fears, and strife. We turn to you and know. Your light, our love and life. Please join me in the call to worship. In these moments of isolation and wondering what tomorrow might bring, let us lift our voices to God. We will call on the one who promises to hear us, who listens to our hearts and souls. In days of uncertainty, when the future seems unclear in life, in death, in every moment, God deals graciously with us. We will rejoice in the one who is walking with us, opening our eyes, touching our hearts. As God's people, we know that the bread of life is for us, even as we hunger for hope, life, joy, and healing for our brokenness. Just as we do with the cup of salvation, we will lift our hearts in thanksgiving to God. Here in this place, the new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this face, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. 
Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and bring us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are new. And our opening affirmation this morning. Holy God, you send the Spirit to fill us with peace as the bread and the cup are filled with the life and grace of Jesus. Cradling the broken bread in his hands, Jesus shows us his grieving brothers, his hungry sisters, so we may go to serve them. Handing us the cup of living hope, we are invited to drink deeply and then go into the world to offer peace to those wearied by fear, to offer freedom to those who are oppressed, to share grace with those who need it most. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you let us offer each other a sign of christ's peace <laughs> everybody peace out. Peace. 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 be with you peace everybody peace. i've unmuted peace. everyone peace be with you <laughs> Hey, Carol, it's good to see you made the call and are able to connect. Thank you. Good. Bev and Carol, I'm going to call on you two first for any prayer since you're on the phone and can't see. No. Um, yeah, it's been a kind of a rough week here. Hello? Okay. Um, I found out this week that my sister, who lives in Fresno, fell. And she hit her shoulder and broke two bones, two pieces off the bone. And they they got it patched up and if it if feels you right, fine. If not, we'll right. have to do surgery. Hold on one second, Carol. We're gonna we're gonna do prayers in just one second. And uh, is there any other uh, piece? of Christ's messages we want to share with everyone here? No, just glad to see everybody. It's good to see everybody. Cal. Cal and, and Carol Christian. Good to see them and Lucille. And Alice made it for the first time. Is she still here with us? Where is she? Alice. Uh-oh, she dropped out. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. So it didn't have all of her settings quite right. Huh. Okay, let's do uh, come and find the quiet center and then we'll be able to move into, into our prayer time. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded lives we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the frame where we are free. Clear the chaos and the clutter. Clear our eyes that we may see all the things that really matter. Yet 
Thank you, Jane. Our prayer families this week are Carol and Jan in Texas, Virginia Devins at um, Diamond Ridge, Clayton Valley Presbyterian Church, our partner over the hill in San Francisco First Samoan Congregational Church, UCC. Um, so now we can um, focus on our prayers. If you have a prayer, you can unmute yourself or raise your hand and I'll call on those who are next. Or you can put it in the chat room that's down below. And I see a hand with Mary. Mary, go ahead. Mary, you're not mute, unmuted. You need to unmute yourself there. I'm now unmuted. Um, I'm just, just curious about Virginia Devins. She's still at Diamond person. Ridge. Is she? Okay. After that big, horrible stroke. Yeah. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And Carol, you mentioned, was it your sister? Yes. Can you say more? Um, it was hard. It was hard to hear before. Okay. She lives in Fresno, but she fell and broke her shoulder, broke two bones. They've got it taped right now. If it heals, fine. But if not, I'll have to go and do surgery to repair the two bones. And... At the same time, my brother who lives in Phoenix found out he has cancer. Mm. My siblings. Prayers. Prayers for Carol and her siblings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, Donald shares a prayer in the chat room. Pray for my friend Becca that she will have a safe move to Texas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Christy. Yes, uh, Carol Zernowski is in the hospital in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, she, she has been treated for cancer and was given an experimental drug that was working for a while and then she's starting to have issues with it. So they admitted her to the hospital. So if we could hold her and Jan in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sometimes those times that people become our prayer families are Serendipitous. Dexheimer's? Yeah. Try that. Oh, I think we both hit it at the same time. Okay. Try that. Prayers for Pat Vines, who uh, had a robbery to her apartment this morning. Mm. We don't know the extent of that yet. So, prayers for Pat. And for all of the sense of violation, uh, safe space, and all of that, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Ann Custer, did you have a prayer? Daughter who is still facing medical issues and will be talking with her doctors tomorrow. Your daughter? Yes. So continued prayers for Julie Custer, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Greg Allman. Got you there, Greg. Had you there. There we go. Two prayers. One of gratitude. Steve Adams' mother, 92, underlying health conditions, was only in the hospital, I think, three days, maybe two, discharged home. She tested positive for the virus and on oxygen only is holding her own. Prayer for clarity of confusion. Steve's sister, primary caregiver and brother-in-law have come down with all of the symptoms, but they test negative for the virus. So go figure. For Steve and his family, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Jane. Just wanted to let everyone know that Paul has finished all his chemo treatments and he's feeling pretty good except for yesterday and today he's not feeling so great. But he, he's getting there. But he's all done with that. So wanted you all to know. And also he said thank you. Many people sent cards and phone calls and prayers and he really appreciated that. That's what church is for. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
prayers from Donald for his friend Eric, that he'll pass a test for his job, and continued prayers for Brian. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Hear prayer. our prayers. Looking for other hands. Okay, Donald. Um, well, I will be starting back at Starbucks very soon. Uh, one location next Saturday and my original location uh, will be opening on the 25th. And, but my hours I know aren't gonna be as they used to be. So I, I filed for unemployment. I pray that that goes through. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And just so that you all know, there is a fund here in Contra Costa. We, if uh, we can't help with our own care team, there is an emergency relief fund that the county has, and I have the phone number and name of Cindy Smith uh, and can share that if you know of anyone who's going without food or has a medical emergency or a transportation emergency or something along those lines. Let me know and I would be glad to share that information. Christy? Yeah, for the, the healthcare workers who are so overwhelmed in certain parts of the country now that they feel supported in the work that they're doing and appreciated in what they're sacrificing. Lord, in your mercy. And especially those that are um, working contracts and running from crisis place for, to other crisis place and are following the places where it's breaking out the worst. Lord, in your mercy. Mary? There I go. Um, a couple of joys, I think. One of the things is that people are being very creative out there and they're sharing it on all kinds of social media, all kinds of fun things to laugh about and look at and whatever. So um, I'm appreciative of the humor and the um, creativity and the music and all kinds of stuff going on because of this. And the space in our lives to be able to be creative and do crafts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And for those sharing their creativity in order to help us even for a little bit with our boredom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. As we move into our prayers this morning. Oh, Judy, go ahead, Judy. This for her. There you go, Judy. Yep. Oh, prayers for my daughter, Alexandra. She's 38 years old today, and she's my baby, and she's also my very godmother. <laughs> Lord, in your grace, hear our prayers. Happy birthday. <clears throat> Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all of the good gifts that we have in our life. We thank you for the ability to be able to be together, even by technology right now. And we thank you for the ability to be church to one another throughout the week and to be able to extend the love that we experience here to those around us. In those moments when it feels as if the fear and the anxiety is closing in, remind us that your presence in our life is always cups overflowing. In those moments when it feels as if everything is going against us, help us to recognize that your abundance is there if we know how to ask for it and are willing to do so. Oh God, in those times when there is abundance for us, help us to know best how to share our own abundance that you've given us to be able to be a blessing to others. Help us to be your people. Help us to live out this life as we follow Jesus who taught us to pray with that radical prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This piece I'm about to sing is entitled, My Sheep Know My Voice, which is the scripture that Christy will be speaking about today. And when I saw what scripture she was using, the song popped into my head. It's one of my dad's favorite hymns written in 1905, but I hope it speaks to you as it did to me. My sheep know my voice and the path that I take. They follow wherever I go. My sheep know my voice and come at my call. But a stranger's voice they do not know. My sheep know my voice and day by day they abide in the fold and go not astray. They love me because I have made them my choice, and they follow my call, for my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice, and the pastures of green, where I lead them so often to feed. My sheep know my voice, and the cool sparkling stream, where beside its still waters I lead. My sheep know my voice, and day by day they abide in the fold and go not astray. They love me because I have made them my choice, and they follow my call, for my sheep know my voice. Thank you, Elaine. That was lovely. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. We celebrate the written word of scripture. Thanks be to God. We celebrate the living word, Christ among us. Thanks be to God. For everyone born a place at the table, 
for everyone born, clean water and bread, a shelter, a space, a safe place for growing, for everyone born, a star overhead. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy for woman and man, a place at the table. Revising the roles, deciding the share. With wisdom and grace, dividing the power. For woman and man, a system that's fair. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, during this time when we are sheltering in place, during this time when many live with fear and anxiety, we turn to you, trusting that you are present with us, trusting the words of scripture that call us to life in abundance. May you be with us this morning as we turn to scripture yet again. And may we come with open hearts and realize there may be new understanding. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So good morning. This morning I had originally thought that May Day would be a good focus for today. And yet, as the pandemic came and we all sheltered in place, it seemed like maybe that was tone deaf to celebrate the beginning of spring and abundance and kind of the wonder of the natural world. And yet, there's something about it that kept calling me back, that even in this time, abundance has a power and a message, I think. And so the passage that Anne just read that Elaine sang of speaks, I think, to this, where Jesus says, very clearly that he has come and he calls each of us into this place of abundance and as the scripture says he calls us by name he calls us and as he calls us we recognize the call we recognize his voice and that as we follow as we live our lives in harmony with his call we come to places of abundance and he says in John 10, I, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. And so to, to explore this, to trust this, and to, to understand that, that there truly is a way that as people of faith, through the life and ministry of Jesus, we have access to what some have called a reservoir of grace within us. And there are other passages in John that, that talk about those of us who have faith having the experience of the presence of God, the experience of the Holy Spirit, as if there is an ever-flowing stream that moves within us and then through us and out of us. And then returning to the song that Jane started with, filling up and spilling over, that this is, this is one image, I think, of what it is to be a Christian that we are called to be filled with the love of Christ and allow that to spill out over us and to experience the, the possibility of abundance, even now in this time. 
when there is fear and anxiety, where people are suffering, where there is grief. But there will always be this gift of abundant love. And yet I, I think the challenge, and one of the things that possibly we can, we can learn by exploring this, the challenge is that often fear can block the feeling of abundance. And as we enter into the reality of this time of sheltering in place, I think that's been so visible around us. Even with little things like toilet paper, the fear of scarcity has led to people wanting to have an abundance of toilet paper. And that this, this odd sense that there's this reciprocal relationship, that fear takes us to places where we feel we need more than we we actually do and, and brings us to a place where we hoard and take things in and don't share them. And that, and so this, this sense that abundance may be possible, but that we can become part of what actually blocks that abundance. And in this time, just for us to, to to be aware of abundance and scarcity, I think is, is informative and, and helpful. I mean, the whole sheltering in place began with the language that we are sheltering in place out of an abundance of caution. And this, this sense that, that being very, very cautious, being very concerned about those who would be most vulnerable to this virus, that we all go into this place of sheltering in place. And so this sense that abundance is what kickstarted all of this. And then again, to see the abundance around us right now, the abundance of unemployment, how many people don't have jobs, and how there are these radically new numbers, the number of people who have the virus, these large numbers, the number of hospital rooms, that may be necessary, depending on whether there's another round of this in the fall. But we are, we've been exposed to very high probable numbers. And this, this sense of, of numbers being completely out of whack, that we're out of balance now. And the numbers, for example, of masks that are needed. And again, to counterbalance that with scarcity that the numbers that are needed compared to what we actually have and this, this sense of scarcity, the sense that, that there aren't enough, that there aren't enough masks, there isn't enough toilet paper, there isn't enough flour, that, that shelves are empty, there's not enough hand sanitizer. So to live in this world now, of an unfamiliar world, where we have an abundance of caution, but no flower, an abundance of unemployment, but no masks. And this, this sense of scarcity and abundance in, in, a, in a radically new way, I think, in our experience. And I think that there is an invitation within this to actually experience its lack of familiarity. We are privileged people and we are used to abundance. We're, we're used to having shelves filled with whatever we want. We're used to being able to buy as much as we want. And to enter into this space where it's possible to walk down grocery store aisles and simply have empty shelves around us, I think is an invitation to experience something that is foreign to many of us, which is that things are not available, that there is not abundance in certain people's lives. And for us to be aware that, that, that this experience of scarcity, which we can experience in relation to flour or toilet paper, this experience of scarcity may be something that other people experience in terms of affordable housing or in terms of health care or in terms of computer access. That there are people who are experiencing scarcity on very fundamental and radical levels. 
And for us, out of this place of abundant, overflowing heartedness, for us to allow ourselves to experience the scarcity in other people's lives. And for us to be educated about that, to know what it must feel like. I mean, just the little twinges that I felt when I couldn't buy toilet paper for weeks and weeks and weeks, that something wasn't available and I didn't have the means to make it available. Imagine what that must be like for someone who, who can't afford housing. In their world, they, they are experiencing scarcity and can't access something that others of us can. And that sometimes there's this connection between scarcity and abundance. That from what we're told, there's as much toilet paper out there as there's ever been, but it's because people are hoarding it, that people are taking more than their fair share, that some people are claiming abundance, that other people don't have enough. And if we expanded that thinking to think in terms of affordable housing, 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 housing access to resources, that those of us who have more than enough are creating scarcity in other people's lives. And for us to be attuned to that and aware of that and sensitive to that and, and choose, again, as people of faith, to do something about that from a place of abundance. And I'm thinking there's so many places where scarcity is showing up now. I mean, we, we think of healthcare workers who are so overwhelmed and the scarcity they're feeling of, of, of resources, that they don't have enough resources to do their job safely. So on top of the incredible stress that they're experiencing, they're experiencing the very real scarcity of masks, of gloves, of protective gear. And the scarcity that some kids are experiencing. I mean, we, we know that, that many children are learning at home now online. And many of those kids have access to computers and are, didn't miss a beat. I mean, school just shifted from in the classroom to at home. And each kid has a computer, each kid has access to all the technology they need to stay connected to their teachers and their classrooms. And yet there's some kids, you know, there's some eight-year-old girl out there who's living in a, in a situation where there are no computers in their houses, in her home. And we've, you know, we've all heard the statistics, you know, there's a certain percentage of kids who never made the transition to online learning. They just didn't have the resources. There's not a computer in their home. And they just, they're just kind of lost in the shuffle. And in some schools, it's 40% of the kids. In other schools, it's 10% of the kids. In some schools, everybody has a computer. But there are certain places where kids are suffering because of the scarcity of technological resources available to them. And so for us simply to be aware of abundance and scarcity and to return to this passage from John where, where Jesus says, those of you who hear my call, those of you who hear my voice and follow me, those of you who live out the love of a Christian life, those of you who experience love abundantly, the call I believe in this time is to be aware of the places of scarcity and to feel the call to share the abundance, which is what Jesus did. I mean, when we, we look at his life, how abundantly he lived, not with material resources. I mean, he just traveled the countryside seemingly with very few resources materially. And yet his heart was always full. His heart was always spilling over. I mean, this, this whole image of this ever-flowing stream is, is a way to understand the life of Jesus, that, that there was always room and time for the, the person on the fringes of society, the person who'd been excluded, the blind person that everyone was trying to shush, the kids who wanted to talk to him, the women, the one who touched his robe, not wanting to bother him, but just trusting that healing would come. His heart overflowed into the lives of all of these people who had need, all of these people who were experiencing some form of scarcity, 
be it in their health, be it in their social situation, be it in their troubled hearts, be it in their grief, that Jesus models for us a heart that overflows, a life that is lived from this place of abundance. He just gave and gave and gave. And even from the cross, I mean, I always struck by the, the way that he, even on his way to the cross, the way that he prayed in Gethsemane with such abundance, such love for life. I mean, he prayed that if the cup that he knew was coming could pass from him, he prayed, he prayed that he could live, he wanted to live. He wanted to be alive. He wanted to continue his ministry. And yet, out of the fullness of his heart, he acknowledged that that might not be the case for him. He acknowledged that death might be the next piece of his life. And then from the cross, how his heart poured out with compassion and forgiveness. He forgave the people who were, in fact, crucifying him. He forgave... Peter for his betrayal after he was resurrected. And he trusted from this place of open-heartedness, this place of abundance, that even at his death, God would meet him and welcome him. And so when we look to Jesus, when we see this incredible open-heartedness, this heart that never closed, this heart that was always open, this heart that always flowed with love. We know that in our time, we're called to that same overflowingness, that same abundance, that same experience of knowing that as we receive love, we are not to hoard it. We are not to let fear shut down our hearts so that we keep all the toilet paper to ourselves, so that we shut down and try and protect ourselves and keep the love to ourselves, but know that as the love comes, we're called to open our hearts and to let it flow out from us. And there are many people in need right now. It's a time when scarcity is a reality for many people. Many people are feeling incredible stress, incredible anxiety, some people incredible grief, some people incredible financial concerns. And there are people we know we can reach out to. There are people that we don't know that we can reach out to in many ways. And it's important that we do. And important that we share like Mary mentioned, our creativity, our love, our music, that that's another way to reach out, to know that, that People are in need of sustenance right now. People are in need of connection. People are in need of, of friendship. And that it may be small things that we're called to do, to share our creativity, to send that card, to make that phone call, to allow the blessings in our lives to flow out. And to know that they'll flow back to us, that this is a, a, a multifaceted, beautiful, wonderful, reciprocal world that we're a part of, that we are part of each other's lives, and that we're there through the scarcity, we're there through the abundance. We can share the scarcity, we can speak of the times when we're feeling in need, and we can share the abundance, the times when we're feeling like we're filled to overflowing, and that we have a lot to give. And we at least have another month of this. Maybe the, some of the restrictions will be lessened, but for a while, many of us will still be home. And so there is much to learn and much to give and much to share. And so let us resonate with the words that Jesus said. I have come to give you life and to give it to you abundantly. Amen. 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 And God will delight when we are creators of justice. 
and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice and joy for gay and for straight, a place at the table, transgender and queer in one family tree, engaging each gift and blessing each covenant. For gay and for straight, a new way to be. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice and joy for firm and infirm, a place at the table for wheelchairs and canes, a child's running feet for sighted and blind, all joining the chorus. The hearing impaired, all feeling the beat. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice and joy. Amen. During this time, when we are sheltering in place and we cannot offer our gifts in person, we ask that you send your offerings online or via snail mail to Merdell or Paul. And their addresses are listed in all the e-blasts and in the newsletter and in the announcements. And we do encourage you to, keep con to continue supporting our work. And now from within our homes, we bring to God the offerings of our hearts and lives. May our gifts be used to bring hope, healing, freedom, and sustenance to those in need. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. Thy will is my will. Heal me at depth so that I may glorify God. Reveal that which needs to be revealed. Heal that which needs to be healed so that I may glorify God. Holy God, we offer our gifts to you in these uncertain times, trusting that our gifts will be of help to those in need. May you use our gifts to bring healing, solace, and peace. In your many names we pray. Amen. Amen. As we come to this moment of communion, let us receive God's invitation that even on our home altars, it's neither a Presbyterian or a congregational altar, all of our altars always belong to God. And as we come to this moment, let us recognize God's invitation for us to be God's people, even at arm's length. And if you have bread and juice, wonderful if you don't the invitation is to use your imagination because we are talking about spiritual things and the the bread and the juice become simply symbols of, of what is actually most alive in an invisible form so if you have something ready that's great if you don't absolutely no problem at all and we are going to do this together 
So the invitation is to have the, the bread and the juice ready at hand. And then as we move through the liturgy, we'll all be invited to offer a blessing to the juice and the bread. So let us begin. We are one bread, one body, one cup of blessing. Though we are many throughout the earth and this church community is scattered, we are always one in Christ. In our many kitchens and living rooms and offices and bedrooms, we now are invited to place our hands upon the juice and the bread. And so please just do that. Just allow yourself to hold your hand above the juice and the bread and, and allow this moment to be one where you feel the presence of Christ, where you actually feel that through this gesture, through this ritual, you are acknowledging the sacredness of the juice and the bread as part of this sacrament, but also as part of what nurtures and sustains our body physically. This is a form of grace, a form of prayer. So let us hold our hand over the juice and the bread and know that we set them both aside today as a sacrament and let us ask God's blessing upon them. Gentle Redeemer, there is no lockdown on your blessing and no quarantine on your grace. Send your spirit of life and love, power and blessing upon every table where your children shelter in place. May this bread be broken and gathered in love and may this cup poured out to give hope to all. Risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you, breathe in us that we may breathe in you. The communion words which were sent to the church at Corinth were these. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so the invitation is to break the bread. And in the breaking of the bread, to know that this is what connects us mm. back in time to Jesus and to each other in the present time and to all people between now and that past. The power of the breaking of the bread is that we claim it as sustenance, as abundant grace, as what sustains and nurtures us. This is the bread of life. Amen. In the same way he took a cup after the supper and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, in my love. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The cup of salvation, the cup of joy. And now, if you take a piece of the bread or the cracker or your imagination and let us in our many places receive this gift from God, it is the bread of life. We are one in Christ in the bread we share. Likewise, let us in our many places receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. We are one in Christ in the cup we share. Come to the table of grace. 
come to the table of joy. This is Christ's table, not just yours or mine. Come to the table of peace. And now let us join in the Thanksgiving prayer. Spirit of Christ, you have blessed our tables and our lives. May the eating of this bread give us courage to live out our faith, not only in church sanctuaries, but in your precious world. And may the drinking of this cup renew our hope, even in the midst of pandemic. Wrap your hopeful presence around all whose bodies, spirits, and hearts need healing. And let us become your compassion and safe refuge. Amen. My life flows on in endless song. Above earth's lamentation, I hear the clear, though far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Let us send each other forth with these words. We know Jesus is present among us, even in this very home. We will not let fear be louder than love, but with glad hearts and rejoicing souls, we will sing God's praise, for we are Easter people. And so we come to the end of the service. And my sense is that after being together, we have been nurtured and blessed and filled with grace. And as we return to our individual homes, our individual lives, we do so knowing that what we have received is to share, knowing that what we have received is abundant, never ending, ever flowing, and will always flow on as we follow the voice of Jesus. Be in peace. Amen. Amen. Peace. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. 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 So good to see everyone.